Hello folks and welcome to this hurricane season short summary. This is going to be going over specifically the 1961 hurricane season. We saw with this season a slightly above average season. 12 storms, 8 hurricanes, 5 major hurricanes, the average being around uh, 10, uh, 5 to 6, and 3 to 4, so not too far off. With that, you would expect to see an ace lower than 188.89, however, that is indeed the ace of this season. Uh, very high just for the number of storms that we had here. Looking especially at October and November, note the unusually high activity for those months. Usually that is reserved for, say, August or September. However, although September did see uh, four simultaneous, uh, August saw zero storms, which is very unusual. With a combined total with the season of 437 deaths and a total of around just under 400 million US dollars in damage, this season thankfully had many storms that stayed out to sea or did not impact land at their peak strength. However, we are going to start with a hurricane that did impact the land at its peak. Carla. Carla started off as being indicated by surface charts on the 3rd of September. This was enough of an indication for it to be classified as a depression and would two days later become a tropical storm. At this point and onwards, Carla is described as unusually large, especially for a tropical storm. Um, later on, we'll see that uh, Carla would impact the entirety of the Texas coastline, uh, with some accounts saying that Carla was as big as the Gulf of Mexico, which, while not a definitive size, does give some indication on just how large Carla was. Carla continues on from the 5th to become a hurricane on the 6th and a major hurricane, that's what MH is standing for there, on the 8th of September. Carla continues to strengthen, peaking on the 11th with wind speeds of 145 miles per hour at a pressure minimum of 927 millibars. The hurricane would landfall near Port O'Connor, Texas, on the same day with winds of around 140 miles per hour. Again, Carla did indeed impact the entirety of the Texas coastline, also impacting some of the Louisianian coastline, uh, none of the Oklahoman coastline, as Oklahoma doesn't have a coastline though, but still impacting Oklahoma, and would also impact some upper Midwestern states a little bit heavier than you might expect. Uh, Carla will be getting her own video, by the way. Carla is also notable for spawning seven F3s and even an F4, which is very uncommon. Now, both F3s and F4s, and you could say EF3s and EF4s, are uncommon for hurricanes to form because at some point, the, tornado the tornado's own circulation is going to be going up against the hurricane's winds, this is the same reason why derecho spawned tornadoes tend to be weaker, because the hurricane's winds along its circulation are going up against the derecho's own winds and forward speed. Carla is responsible for 43 direct deaths and 326 million US dollars in damage. Debbie is uh, quite notable for very interestingly, becoming a tropical depression immediately off the coast of Africa, and this was done on the 5th of September. Uh, Debbie is also, was also part of an unusual series of tropical waves, or uh, just waves out in the deserts of Africa, it happened to be the Sahara Desert, that the only reason why these waves did not become tropical was the fact that it did not have access to warm waters, and that was it. Other than that, these waves had everything to become tropical, which is something that is not normal. So, makes sense that this depression would immediately form off the coast.
Debbie then becomes a hurricane by the 7th of September, and from this point for three days until the 10th, we would have no reliable data on Debbie simply because of lack of reconnaissance. However, the peak is estimated to have been on the 11th. This is a wind speed of 90 knots per hour at a pressure minimum of 975 millibars. Debbie would therefore, from this point onwards, or a few days after, be classed as extra tropical, and then glance a chill island on the 16th, with winds keeping up hurricane strength at 85 miles per hour. The remnants of Debbie reached a lower pressure than when it was tropical, reaching 950 millibars. Debbie finally dissipated while going through Scandinavia on the 19th of September. Debbie is ultimately responsible for 18 direct deaths and 61 indirect deaths, and as well as an estimated 50 million US dollars in damage. Esther is uh, a fairly notable hurricane here for quite a few reasons. Heroes 3 uh, spotted Esther as a tropical depression on the 10th of September. From this point on, Esther continues to strengthen, becoming a hurricane by the 12th. This makes Esther one of four simultaneous, like I mentioned earlier at the very beginning. Esther is, along with Betsy, Carla, and Debbie, although for a very brief time, four simultaneous hurricanes. This is something that you almost never see in any basin even the Northwest Pacific, ever. Uh, this is one of the extremely few times that something like this has been done in the Atlantic. However, Esther would continue to strengthen, becoming a major hurricane by the 13th of September, with, with tropical storm force winds extending a fairly large 217 kilometers outwards, and... Hurricane force winds extending around 130 kilometers outwards. Esther is notable for being one of the very first targets of Project Storm Fury, a project to see if seeding hurricanes with silver iodide would weaken them. Technically, this was a success. The storm weakened by around 10%. However, this was for the short term, as Esther continued to strengthen reaching a peak while to the north of Puerto Rico on September 18th of 160 miles per hour at a pressure minimum of 919 millibars. Esther then takes on a more northerly approach, as we can see here, then turning straight north, then a little bit, and oh my goodness, what is going on? A loop starts uh, just around Long Island, and ends just around Long Island too. The full loop takes around four days, I believe it was, to complete. Esther then finally landfalls near Rockland, Maine, at tropical storm strength on the 26th of September. Esther is responsible for seven indirect deaths and six million US dollars in damage. Hattie is a very interesting storm here as well, being one of the few times that a season would have multiple Category 5s because of Hattie. But before we get to that, Hattie uh, was confirmed to be a tropical depression on the 27th of October. Hattie then is uh, flown into, and they find winds surprisingly of 125 miles per hour, so peaking, so sorry, strengthening very, very fast here. Hattie then peaks on the 31st of October at a peak of 165 miles per hour at a pressure minimum of 914 millibars. Hattie landfalls near Belize City, Belize at 150 miles per hour with a pressure of 924 millibars. The island of Grand Cayman reported at least 290 millimeters of rain from Hattie, which is just under a foot, 
and Hattie w was the fourth on record to hit the island of San Andres, and at the time was the only storm to hit San Andres from the south. Uh, but despite this, after uh, striking Belize City, Hattie dissipated just the next day, as there is some pretty mountainous terrain in uh, the entirety of Central America. The remnants of Hattie would, uh, interestingly, interact in the East Pacific to form Tropical Storm Inga, actually, which is part of, you guessed it, the 1961 uh, Pacific hurricane season. Hattie is responsible for 319 deaths and 60.3 million U.S. dollars in damage. I talked about the beginning that this season is notable, but not really talked about. But again, uh, this is a just above average season, but we see an extraordinarily high ace for what you would think would be an average season. This is also one of only seven so far in the entirety of the history of documented Atlantic hurricane seasons, with more than one Category 5. This, uh, system, sorry, this season produced Carla, the most intense Texas landfall in the entirety of the 20th century. Uh, one of the other ones uh, being uh, Galveston of 1900, although technically... Uh, the 20th century started in 1901. I'm sorry, <clears throat> 1901. Pardon, pardon the voice crack. Uh, 1901, just because of how centuries uh, work, just like how uh, the decade started in 2021. But whatever, whatever. Details, details, you know. Uh, Hattie would actually be the strongest storm in the entirety of the Atlantic Basin in October until Mitch of 1998 came along, which will eventually be talked about, and Mitch will absolutely be getting his own video. Note that the names of Carla and Hattie would be retired this season, and those would actually be the only two to be retired, which makes sense based on the criteria for retirement. But with that, folks, that is all that I have for the 1961 hurricane season. A notable one, again, despite not being talked about that often, definitely deserves to be remembered. Again, I hope that you all learned something from this video, and I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.